Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, I'm doing another Q&A video where I take your questions from Twitter and I answer them all in this video. So we've got a lot of awesome questions today, so let's not waste any more time and let's jump straight into it. Our first question today comes from Brayden, who says, why is Rockstar giving players free money? Could we be seeing a swing in a huge DLC in the near future? So Brayden, to answer your question, I have no idea why Rockstar is giving away free money. In fact, they haven't even made it or known why they're giving out free money. So this is indeed one of the most interesting mysteries in Grand Theft Auto Online. So regardless if you got the money or not, one way in which you can make some extra cash in Grand Theft Auto Online is through App Bounty. I've been working with them for a couple months now, and App Bounty is it's an app that you can download onto your phone where you essentially play games and earn credits. I'll leave a link to the app in the description. It's for iPhone and Android and also my discount code as well Mr. Boss which gets you 50 free credits basically what you do is you download games you get credits you can turn those into PSN cards Xbox cards Amazon cards and then you can flip those straight into shark cards which I know would be awesome to do because even though Rockstar did give away the free money the most I've seen people getting is $250,000 whereas if you're able to earn some free credits with App Bounty you can turn those into shark cards which obviously is is going to net you a whole lot more than that. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Check it out. It is pretty awesome. And my discount code is down there as well. But to kind of wrap up your question about why is Rockstar giving away free money? I don't know. Maybe they're feeling in the giving spirit or maybe what you said, maybe a huge DLC is on the way and they're trying to prep players by giving them this subtle hint that the new content is going to be expensive. And a follow-up question to that comes from Callum who says, do you think Rockstar will explain why some players are getting free money or do you think it will remain a mystery? I think it will remain a mystery outside of of what they've already stated, which is to help further fund your criminal enterprises. Although that's one of the most broad and general statements ever, but I honestly don't expect anything more from Rockstar. And I do think it's going to remain a mystery. Probably the biggest mystery is why some players are getting more than others. You'd think this would be a uniform system, and that is probably the most interesting and mysterious part, that some players are getting like $250,000, but other players are only getting like $100,000. I'm not sure why that's the case. So many of you guys asked this question, and I took one question from Hunter that asked both of them, and that was, what do you think the next DLC is going to be and when? That was probably the majority of the questions that you guys asked today. What's going to be the next DLC and when? So let's just assume that Valentine's Day is out of the question because that's probably going to be the next update, whether Rockstar adds a new one into the game or whether they do some special event week where they just do bonuses and uh, sales on some of the previous content, we're just going to assume that's already happening. Now, this kind of leads us to a fork in the road. If there is a new Valentine's update added into the game where Rockstar make us download a DLC, there's likely going to be tunables content within that that Rockstar kind of drip feed throughout the next couple of weeks, probably leading sometime into March. And obviously, you would get the pattern right there. However, the second scenario, if there's no new Valentine's update, meaning there isn't a new DLC for us to download, I would suspect a formal DLC download would occur either at the end of February or at the beginning of March. This kind of follows the same pattern of what they did in late 2015, early 2016 with Executives and Other Criminals and Lowriders Customs Classics. And what the theme could be, I'm really not too sure. Realistically, there's a good chance that Rockstar would kind of continue the import and export theme. I'm not sure if they would call it like import or export part two, but maybe it would be an expansion or some new features of the CEO system. There's always a possibility they could dive back into Bikers part two, but my personal preference would be to explore something different, whether it's like an off-roading theme or a muscle theme, or if it's a nightlife theme, something along those lines would be great, but I would most likely suspect a release date of late February to early March, just kind of like we saw in 2015 and 2016. Now kind of staying with import or export, this next question comes from Brock who says, will the next GTA update be a bigger update than import or export? So Brock, I hate to like burst your bubble here and this necessarily isn't a bad thing, but no, I don't think whatever we're gonna be getting next will be bigger than import or export. Number one, import or export was a huge DLC. It featured 60 car garages, brand new vehicles, uh, uh, special vehicles, a ton of Benny's cars, so many new features and things to do. It was a huge DLC. But also number two, Rockstar has a pattern of this. Remember executives and other criminals? That was a huge DLC that took place in December of 2015. 
And then in 2016, we kind of saw two smaller DLCs after that. I think the same thing is going to happen here. Importer Export was a huge DLC in 2016. And then I think in the early parts of 2017, we're going to see a little bit of a slowdown and smaller updates. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's just a pattern that Rockstar traditionally follows. And I think that's what we're going to be seeing in this year as well. Now, that's a great segue into another question from Nash, who says, do you think that Rockstar will add any more money-making methods like CEO and motorcycle clubs? I'm not sure, Nash. Again, my prediction is that sometime down the line, we will get a expansion of either one of those. So we'll get like another use of the CEO system or another use of the motorcycle club. Or who knows, Rockstar might end up doing a third. Maybe they would do some sort of gang system that they never really explored with lowriders, where you could basically form your own like gang and I'm not talking about motorcycle club here I'm talking about something that rivals like the Balas or the Vagos or the families or something like that that's just kind of my best prediction or some sort of like criminal business crime syndicate where you purchase businesses in the game stuff like Bahama Mamas you know maybe opening up the stock market that would be perfect for another sort of expansion of the CEO system and to me that would be exciting kind of running and owning businesses really does bring me back to city when you would buy like the Malibu Club and Pole Position and the Cherry Popper ice cream, you know, facilities, and you would do missions for those businesses. That, in my opinion, could be pretty amazing if they were to expand some sort of DLC like the CEO or Motorcycle Club. Now, speaking of places like Bahama Mamas, nightclub, stuff like that, our next question comes from Knife Guy who says, do you see Rockstar ever opening locations like the hospital, police station, Bahama Mamas for online use as well? So the only way I would see them doing this is what I described earlier with like a business-centric themed update or as kind of like a grand finale update to online where Rockstar says, here you go, sandbox mode activated where they opening up all the buildings and they allow us to just kind of free mode and do whatever we want. But until that day comes or until a business update happens, no, I don't think so. I'm not sure why the locations are in the game. Rockstar just has a weird use of keeping them locked in online sessions. Moving on, we got a question from Oscar who says, why do you think that the Rockstar employee that leaked basically the whole import or export DLC has been silent recently? So Oscar, I've got a couple explanations for that. Number one is that he might have gotten caught. I mean, obviously what he was doing was probably breaking some sort of non-disclosure agreement with Rockstar. So him leaking all of that out probably wasn't the best. And I'm sure Rockstar is aware of this happening. Uh, number two, it's likely that he just doesn't know any DLC information. I mean, Rockstar haven't teased anything on their newswire, haven't told us anything, and haven't shared any content as to what's going to be coming next. So there's a good chance that he knows just about as much as us, which is really nothing. Or, and this is kind of my third theory, he's holding out until new content is announced because with importer export, he didn't start telling us this information until it was already announced that it was going to be coming into the game. So that's kind of my prediction is that once we finally get a either a teaser or an announcement of what's next, he'll eventually spill the beans and tell us what's going to be going on in the update. And let me know in the comment section down below, do you like the DLCs being spoiled? Do you wish they were more of a surprise? Let me know your thoughts and opinions and more in the comment section down below. Up next, we have a question from Exceeding Panic who said, will any of the Grand Theft Autos be remastered? So Panic, if I had to take a guess, I would say the most likely or possible one to be remastered would be Grand Theft Auto 4, really because it's already in the HD universe and next year is the 10 year anniversary. So wouldn't that be so cool if like obviously Red Dead Redemption 2 came out in 2017, but in 2018, Rockstar did like a remastered version of Grand Theft Auto 4 that takes place in Liberty City for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, that would be so incredible. I really do think that would be amazing. It's definitely the most likely one because they wouldn't have to necessarily rebuild it all that much. They would just have to modify the textures, whereas a game like Vice City or San Andreas, they would have to completely rebuild, uh, which would obviously take way too long. Now, speaking of Grand Theft Auto Online and speaking of uh, 2018, this next question comes from Alu who says, do you think that Grand Theft Auto Online will live through 2018. So I'm assuming he's asking this because uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is scheduled to come out fall 2017. And I'm guessing his question is, will Grand Theft Auto Online get updates after Red Dead Redemption 2? And honestly, I do believe that yeah, it is. I think that at this point, Grand Theft Auto Online has become way bigger than Rockstar ever imagined. And I think it would be foolish of them for them to completely abandon it. Now, do I think that updates will definitely slow down? Oh, 100% yes, because it won't be Rockstar 
Pixar's main focus. They'll obviously want to make sure that Red Dead Redemption 2 is thriving and is, you know, getting updates and support, but I don't necessarily think that that means they're going to chop off the head of Grand Theft Auto Online and completely let it die. I definitely think that updates are going to continue to come out and that we're going to be getting still pretty cool content. All right, moving on, our next question comes from Sebastian who says, how do you think we will start to decode future updates and DLCs? So Sebastian is talking about the tunables actually being changed. Rockstar have made them much harder to decrypt, which means that it won't necessarily be as easy to see what sort of changes Rockstar make via the tunables in Grand Theft Auto Online, but it isn't that big of a deal. Uh, when a new update is added into the game, we'll still be able to see the hidden content. What we're working on right now is just trying to figure out the changes they make via tunables. They kind of made a system a little bit harder that uh, makes it more difficult to look into what Rockstar is doing. So I guess they didn't approve of that, but I'm sure there's going to be a workaround soon. And finally, last but not least, we have a question from Ben Willis who says, will Rockstar ever add extensive gun customization feature? Now, Ben, this is an interesting question. I would say no, really because you need to think of the game we're playing, Grand Theft Auto, the focus on auto here. That's why we see such extensive car customization because they're such a big part of the game. Now, guns are important, but I don't think they're as big as vehicles, obviously. So I think you would see stuff like that in games that are more focused around guns, like FPS games, first-person shooters, Call of Duty, Battlefield, but I don't think that will ever be in GTA just because that's not the main focus of the game. But anyways, that's all the questions that I'm going to be answering in this week's Q&A video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. As always, if you want to get featured in the next Q&A, all you have to do is go down in the description, follow me on Twitter, and use the hashtag AskBoss whenever I'm looking for Q&A questions, and you might find yourself featured in the next one. If you did go on and enjoy this one, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily G. GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.